Good morning. Uh, it's a great day to praise God together. Why don't we stand and bring up everything that we have to God in song? we praise our God. It's so awesome that we get to uh, know that God is our Father and that we can come together and worship Him. So let's sing.
तरीके से Well, good morning and welcome to church. It's great to be gathering in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Alan. It's great to be amongst us this morning and uh, welcome especially if there's anybody here for the first time or just begun to come here uh, since the beginning of of the year. So God bless you as well as as we gather together. I've got a, just a few announcements, but I'll uh, open with prayer before we go there. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for your loving kindness and goodness to us. We pray Lord God as we uh, sing praises to you as we pray together as we uh, listen to your word and it explain to us Lord we pray that we might bring honor and glory to you and that you'll open our hearts that we might trust you and bring all our thoughts and to you and we pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Well a few announcements with us uh, on tonight those uh, in our creative team are meeting together now what's the creative team the creative team are those that work on the back desk up there uh, making the sound and the visuals happen and also those that uh, 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 service on the, on up here in in song and uh, with musical instruments if you're not in the, in that team and you'd like to think about it uh, and what it involves you're very welcome to come uh, tomorrow night uh, here uh, at seven o'clock and that's the creative team meeting now we know that Alara Marsden Park is growing fast there's a new high school starting uh, Malom Malomba High School and under the lord's leading we want to be able to get some scripture teachers into that school so there's an opportunity for those who may be interested in being involved in that uh, to meet at the uh, on wednesday night at the marsden park neighborhood center now if you're not sure whether you could be involved you can be involved by praying so please let's pray that god will raise up many folk not only from our church but from other churches in the district that we might bring the gospel of our lord jesus christ to year 7 and year 8 students starting uh, in that brand new school there's a women's conference coming up in march and if you'd like to know more details you can see rachel about that it's going to be on saturday the 9th of march uh, in the afternoon tickets are 25 dollars and a great opportunity to, for women in our church to gather together and to hear a great speaker now many of us are in life groups and let's uh, praise god and thank god that we can meet together during the week sometime so if you are in a life group that's great and we pray that they'll be starting back uh, pretty soon and uh, if you're interested in joining a life group that would be marvelous so if you could follow the url screen or register your interest or talk to mark or to adam or to me that would be great um, and we'll see if we can make sure uh, we you can begin a life group during the daytime or in the evening Well we thank God for those who are very generous and cheerful in giving and we thank you for your gifts mainly through online giving uh there's an opportunity if you'd like to give in cash there's a black uh, box on the de welcome desk if that's the manner in which you like to give financially we thank God for the opportunity not only of uh, uh conducting ministry in Marsden Park here but also to be able to do it in other places around the world Let me pray and then I'll be praying for the children before they uh, zip off to uh, to kids church. If you're in uh, a preschooler or up to commencing year 2, um then you can go to Explorers Plus, but if you're going into year 3 and older, you're welcome to stay in here and there are some activity sheets that you can be involved in. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity not only for adults but also for children to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray your blessing on all of us as we gather together to hear your word, to pray, and uh, Lord that you might bring honor and glory to your name in whose name we pray. Amen. Okay, those of you that are up to year 2 at school, you're welcome to uh, to go to uh, Explorers and the rest of us can just have a chat amongst ourselves for a few moments. Um that would be great. Let's stand together as we sing of the amazing grace that God has given to us.
Please take your seats and let's pray together. Let's pray. Kind Father God, we praise you for your love for us, especially that you have shown us through the Lord Jesus Christ. You are so kind and you are so gracious to us. You treat us far better than we deserve. Though we were by nature deserving of your wrath, you have instead shown us great love, mercy and compassion by including us in your kingdom and your family through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful thing you have done for us. And so we ask that as we have been saved, so we would seek to see others also saved. Help us not to think of others as beyond saving or impossible to talk about uh, Jesus with, as we are so quick to think in these ways often. Help us instead to know your incredible power displayed even in our weakness, which moves hearts and minds towards faith and love in your Son. We also ask that those who come to join us here in your church at Marston Park would see us behaving as your people. Father, please guide us in changing our ways so that we would avoid sinful behaviour and strive towards godly and holy living so as to bring you, you honour and glory. You have made us, kind Father, to be your people, and in your wisdom you have made us to be dependent on you. Because of our own frailties and doubts, we often fail to trust you appropriately. But your magnificent love and care, and in your patience, you, you teach us to rely on you and to call out to you. If we are lacking wisdom, please give it to us that we may understand you, that we may understand your world and our place in it. If we are lacking basic needs and things to live, then help us to rely on you and call on you for help. If we are sick or in any kind of pain or distress, remind us of your great compassion and cause us to lean on you for strength and support. Help us to seek after you. Help us to remember your promises of love and mercy and your constant provision of all good things. Teach us full obedience, that by knowing, understanding and following your instructions, we would honour you and keep your law of love. Help us to love others the way you have loved us. And by our love, may others come to know your love and glorify your name. But we think as well of all the great and many opportunities you have already shown us in 2024. We think of school scripture classes in our local primary schools. Please, kind God, raise up more teachers for these children that we would partner well with the local schools and give your children more time in your word during the week. We think of the upcoming local high school and the opportunities this provides. Help us to wisely and carefully manage this opportunity and please bless the meeting on Wednesday about high school scripture, that your will would be done. We think of our Friday night youth, our Sunday children's ministries, our soon to be recommencing life groups and Thursday playtime and many other things that we do. Father, we are planning for all of these wonderful ministries to recommence soon. Go before us in all of our planning. Give us great wisdom and understanding and hearts to serve in these ministries, no matter our age, young or old, or skill, experienced or fresh. Father, please take all of these ministries and our plans for them and use them to further your kingdom, save your people, and glorify your name. It's in your son's name that we ask these things. Amen.
Good morning. Today's Bible reading, once I pull the pulpit up, is from Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 1, going to verse 12. Matthew 7, starting at verse 1. If you find in your device, Bible, or whatever. Do not judge. Or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give to dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. And ask whatever it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's uh, fantastic that you can join us, and it's uh, great to uh, meet some people for the first time. Uh, my name's Mark Collins, if you haven't met me before. Uh, a special hello and welcome. And you may know that uh, we're, we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount here in church. And if you're a person who loves a good cliché... This passage is for you. Now, what's a cliché? Well, they're usually sayings or ideas that have become overused to a point of losing its original meaning or effect. Now, there's a couple on the screen there. You might want to have a look at them and see if you can... Maybe you heard those things said to you before or you might have said them yourself. Now, this passage is full of one-liners from Jesus. And these one-liners, well, they've made their way into common use because people think they're worth saying. But because they've made their way into common use, I think some of their original meaning has been lost. Take the log out of your own eye. Don't throw your pearls to swine. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And the golden rule, do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. Who's ever heard these said? Anyone put your hands up? Yeah, most of the room. Now, why does our culture know the same from Jesus? Well, despite changes and our society moving to be post-Christian, Western culture still has ties back to the Bible. Thousands of years of Christian teaching leads people to vaguely remember what Jesus says. 
And I think another reason why these sayings are remembered is because they actually contain some common wisdom. But I guess the question comes, has our understanding of these sayings been shaped by our culture rather than the biblical context? Now, we've already seen and heard from Adam, the Sermon of the Mount was spoken into a certain culture and a certain biblical context. Culturally, Jesus is speaking to people in the first century. It's a Jewish audience. And the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, well, Jesus speaks to Jewish people before he speaks to us. And actually, at this time in Jesus' ministry, there is no such thing as Christians. Why? Because Jesus hasn't died on the cross and he hasn't risen again. But the other context is biblical. See, the Gospels are firstly about Jesus before they are about us. And Matthew's Gospel contains other sayings of Jesus, which actually help us to understand the meaning of the Sermon on the Mount. So could it be understanding both the culture and the biblical contexts, we might find a deeper meaning to some of Jesus' one-liners in the Sermon on the Mount? Now today, with these things in our minds, we're going to take a deeper look at this passage under two headings. One, don't be judgy. I made up that word, that's okay. Uh, Persistence pays off. But first, don't be judgy. Now, are these first verses of chapter 7 talking to us about some courtroom drama? And the judge needs to be really careful about the way he judges a crime because you never know that judge one day might be in a courtroom as well being judged himself. Is that what it's talking about? Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. What sort of judgment is being spoken about here? Now, it can't be all forms of judgment because the Sermon on the Mount has already spoken about making judgments on certain moral issues. And the Bible says, and Jesus says to people, we should make the right judgment. John chapter 7, verse 24 is an example of this. It says, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. So Jesus elsewhere tells us that some forms of judging are okay. But another thing comes to mind when I think of this one-liner, is if God judges like us well, then I think we're in trouble. See, can a holy judge judge like me with the same unrighteousness that I have judged others with? That has to be seriously questionable. Now, the famous Christian author, John Stott, he says this in one of his books, the command to judge not is not a requirement to be blind, but rather a plea to be generous. Jesus does not tell us to cease to be people, but to renounce the presumptuous ambition to be God. But it might be the illustration of the sawdust and the plank that may help clarify what sort of judgment Jesus is talking about. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Now, maybe 
If a person says something to you to correct you and you don't really like that correction, that image of a plank might come out of that person's eye and you might think what they're saying is ridiculous because they can't remove that massive plank from their eye. But again, as we think about the Jewish context and Jesus' trouble with the religious leaders, there actually might be a deeper meaning. See, the religious leaders have already got a mention in the Sermon of the Mount with the word hypocrite being used in chapter 6. And now this appears again in verse 5. The Jewish religious leaders kept on judging Jesus. You just have to read a little further in Matthew's Gospel to see the criticism that they throw at him. He's called the prince of demons after healing a demon-possessed man. In Matthew chapter 12, he's judged because his disciples pick grain and he heals on the Sabbath. He's judged so severely that Matthew 12 verse 14 says that the religious leaders plot to kill him. Could it be here that Jesus is warning the Jewish people against judging and rejecting their long-awaited Messiah, Jesus? And if they judge and reject the Messiah, they will be the ones that face judgment. See, those who receive Jesus, well, they will be received by him into life now and forever. But those who reject him will be rejected by him. And this is consistent with the rest of the Bible. Israel's religious leaders try to take the speck out of Jesus' eye, but they forget about the plank in their own eye, which unfortunately leads to God's judgment on them. Sure, the surface meaning is okay. Yes, we should strive not to be judgy people in the way we act or correct others, and especially for those who don't trust in Jesus. We should be loving people. We should also strive to lovingly restore a brother or sister in Christ if they've done something to offend God or us. But maybe there's a deeper meaning. Now, verse 6 in our passage today can be a little bit confusing as to why it's here. Do not give dogs what is sacred... Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Sounds pretty harsh, right? Now, the traditional interpretation of verse 6 sees it as the counterbalance to verses 1 to 5. Don't judge, but be discerning. Pigs and dogs, well, they're those people who are against you and against sharing the gospel. And if people are rejecting the gospel, well, guess what? Don't share it with them. Just move on. But then this week, I actually heard from a prison chaplain at Parkley Prison that he had 69 people make a commitment to Jesus in 2023. 69 people. That's probably more people than there are combined making a commitment at all of the life Anglican churches. Now, to be honest, if I was a judgy type and thought about people who might reject the gospel because of what they've done, prisoners will be at the top of my list. But clearly God has completely different plans to me. And I also feel that the traditional interpretation is actually inconsistent when we look at the Great Commission, which is at the end of Matthew's Gospel. 
And that says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And it goes on. But is there an exception there? Does Jesus say, but leave alone those who you think are rejecting the gospel? No, he doesn't, does he? And are there really people out there that we shouldn't share the gospel with? I mean, when we run Alpha again this year in May, do we need to get somebody on the door like a bouncer to ask questions to find out if a person that comes has re- ever rejected the gospel? Is that what we need to do? No, that would be crazy. And actually, the Bible clearly says that we are all unworthy. None of us have done the right thing to deserve Jesus' love or his good news on our own steam. See, we've all trampled on the gospel because we were all sinners before Jesus opened our eyes through the Holy Spirit to trust in him. So what is sacred in Matthew is God's kingdom. And instead of trampling it underfoot, everything must be sold to pursue it. Matthew 13, verses 45 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and brought it. And bought it, I should say. (laughs) The most precious thing is the long-awaited Messiah who initiates the kingdom of God. And friends, that is Jesus Christ. He is the most precious one. See, friends, different interpretations will lead to different application. Don't judge. On the surface means you should not be judgmental out of fear that you'll be treated the same by God. But this interpretation contains no grace. And we know it's impossible for a holy and righteous God to judge like us. Yes, we shouldn't be judgy, but not out of guilt and fear. We aren't judgy, Because we know how much God truly loves us. And we want to show his love to everyone who we meet. Even for a second, if we think a person isn't worthy of God's love. Well, the good news corrects us and says that everyone is worthy of God's love. But people need to respond to this wonderful gift. So we move on to the final section of today's passage, and that's persistence pays off. Now, if you've got your Bibles open there, these words in verse 7, ask, seek, knock, well, sometimes they're used to give the impression that God is our own personal vending machine. If you want success, just ask. If you want money, Just ask. God will write you a blank check. Ask and it will be given to you. It's like God is a cosmic Santa Claus. And all we need to do is bring our wish list before him and we will be given all that we ask for. Now, I believe there's no harm in asking God in prayer according to his will. But I think we need to look at the context of ask, seek and knock to see if there's a deeper meaning. See, ask, seek and knock seems to suggest a rising scale of intensity in one's prayers. And it points to a persistence in living life with God, our Heavenly Father. But what's the focus of this type of prayer? Well, I think... It's the kingdom of God. And Matthew 6, verse 33, has already told us to seek first God's kingdom. 
See, a place in God's kingdom is the number one priority. Ask God to enter his kingdom, seek the kingdom, and knock down the door to get into the kingdom. See, God wants to give good gifts, and he doesn't want to turn away anyone who truly comes to him in repentance and faith. And friends, as the passage says, we all know how to give good gifts to our children or our grandchildren. I'm sure if I ask the children that remain in the room, did you get a good gift or a gift that you wanted at Christmas? I'm sure everyone would probably say yes. So we do know how to give good gifts. But I don't know if that part of the passage shocks you because God or Jesus actually calls us evil. So we could give good gifts, but we are evil. Evil because our hearts are sinful and rebellious against God. But despite these spiritual flaws, we can still do some good things. But this verse is like a bit of a comparison, isn't it? Because it's comparing us to our Heavenly Father. And as we know, our Heavenly Father is so much better than us and he is the ultimate gift giver. The ultimate gift giver who has given to the world Jesus. Jesus who died on the cross for our sins and for those who trust in him, the gift of life in God's kingdom now and forever. The gift that is freely given to all who ask, seek and knock. Now, to close today, we're going to look at verse 12, which, as I said earlier, is known as the golden rule. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, For this sums up the law and the prophets. Now, Jesus didn't invent the golden rule. It had been around in popular religious culture long before he arrived. There's evidence that Jewish rabbis used it long before Jesus said it. So what does it mean? Well, the hint is in the line, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Because elsewhere in Matthew's gospel, summing up comes in the form of two commandments. Love God and love your neighbour. So what are we to do as members of God's kingdom? Well, it's to love God first and foremost and express God's love to others. And that's a very, very high bar. And it's impossible to achieve by ourselves. But thankfully, God has provided the Holy Spirit, who is in everyone who is counted in God's kingdom, which helps us and guides us in how to live life for him. So today we've seen that God's kingdom is so important. It's the number one priority and we need to knock down the door to get in there. And we've seen that Jesus' one-liners, well, they're much more than cliches. We need to listen to his words and be persistent in continuing to live by them as followers of Jesus who aren't judgy but loving. Loving towards God and loving towards any person who God puts in our life with the self-sacrificial love that Jesus demonstrated to us on the cross. Friends, the Sermon on the Mount is powerful because it focuses us on Jesus, on God's kingdom, and loving him and others wholeheartedly. Let me pray. Father God, we just want to thank you so much today that your son came to earth, that your son taught taught us 
how to be in your precious kingdom. How to be, have life now. How to have life forever. Father God, we just pray for us that we will never be people that are judgy, but rather people who are loving. Loving you so much that we want to share your love with others. And we don't put conditions on sharing your love as the Sermon on the Mount has taught us. No, no, we go forward by the power of the Holy Spirit and we love each person that you have put in our paths. Father God, help us to love others as you you have loved us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Our Father in heaven gives us good gifts if we ask. He also gave us a gift that we didn't ask for in his son Jesus. And he put to death sin and evil so that we might have a restored relationship with him. Why don't we stand together as we sing?
Let's sit down just for a few moments before we break for some refreshments. We thank God for Mark and he's bringing the God's word to us today. If you'd like to connect with Mark or Adam or one of the staff uh, or you'd just like to simply have a comment to make, you're welcome to uh, use the Connect cards. There's uh, physical copies on the welcome desk or you can go to the URL and uh, connect with Life Inc. Life AC Org AU Connect card if you'd like to uh, ask for prayer or for have any particular uh, stuff that you'd like to connect uh, with our ministry team with. Please uh, remember if your children are in uh, kids' church that to get them in a few moments' time. And we're going to be having refreshments out in the shade on the other side of the, the plaza there. And also if you need the toilets there in the building uh, just uh, near where the, uh, the morning tea is there. Um, those of you who'd like to have a dip in the pool, we're going to be going to Rivo Pool today after the service if you'd like to, to join there and have a part of our summer hangout. Let me pray as we finish in here and continue to meet with one another outside. Father God, we pray indeed that you would help us to, uh, to not only just to, to see, uh, be judgy with others, Lord, but Lord, just to seek after you and your kingdom. Lord, we pray that you'll grant us the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be able to love others. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, cause us and stir us up to pray for the kingdom of God to expand through our local primary schools and new high school in Alara. Lord, for this uh, 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 college here that's going to be commencing high school, Father, we pray for playtime, we pray for all sorts of ministries that if we're not actively involved in them, that we will pray and seek.